this is the photograph that I shot with a new film camera that I got. And you know, that camera is pretty weird. And so in this video, I want to show it to you, tell you the story about how I got it, and take you with me on a couple photography sessions to show you what it is capable of. One more night with the dead. So back in December, I traveled home to my family for Christmas, and you must know that now that me and my siblings are pretty much adults, Christmas in my family has become more of a small event that brings us all together, but we don't really make it a huge thing, and we usually also don't give each other gifts anymore. But this year was a little different. My mum was just sitting in her chair and suddenly something popped into her mind. She said to me that she remembered that she has a gift for me. I of course was a little surprised and followed her as she stood up to go to a different room to get the gift. She looked around a bit, wondering where she had put it, and then she took it out and showed me this here. This is the Fisher-Price Perfect Shot 35mm film camera, a toy camera that was sold in the early 2000s as the perfect beginner camera to hand to your child without needing to worry about the kid messing up the film by opening the back or anything like that. I don't know why, but my mum just found this thing somewhere while tidying up, and it was still in its original packaging with a proper ceiling, and so it was certain that this thing has not once been used since its purchase. And so now that she found it, and she has a son who likes to shoot film, she wanted to give it to me all these years later. The camera looks a bit like a colourful submarine you'd see in a kid's TV show. It rocks a yellow, blue and red colour palette, the small lens is protected by a massive red barrel around it, the body itself is blue, and for good grip with children's hands, the body is equipped with two big yellow handles on the side. The lens is a 35mm focal length with a fixed aperture of f6.8. The shutter is this big red button on top of the right handle. And now comes my favourite feature. For better ease of use for children, this camera doesn't have a normal viewfinder, it has binocular viewfinders. So no need to raise this up and close one eye and look through. Instead, you have binoculars and just raise it up and look through with two eyes. The design of this feature just looks so funny and cool at the same time. It reminds me of the CDA guys from Monsters Inc. Anyway, here at the back you can find a red wheel which you use to wind the film. And on the left is a green button to activate the flash. So yes, this camera is even equipped with a powerful flash. The back door is black and only features one little round window to display the number of shots you're on. And then the last notable feature is the mechanism to open the back door. So that a child doesn't mistakenly open the back and expose the undeveloped film to light, which would erase all the photos, the back door is equipped with a slightly more sophisticated mechanism. You can see here the camera has a green plastic key hanging from it. This key is to be inserted here, and then while holding it there you can press this button to open the back of the camera. I conducted some basic tests to see whether the camera works, such as this wonderful test shot here. This camera hasn't been used in 20 or more years, and so I had my doubts, but at the same time I wouldn't know why it shouldn't work, because I mean, it was always kept safe, even in its original packaging. And so once I thought that it seemed to work decent enough to shoot a whole roll of film through it, I decided to keep the roll of Fuji Superior Extra 400 that I had loaded for the test shot, and shoot the whole roll to share the results with you. The photos on this roll are split into three different locations. On the first day of shooting, I took the camera with me to the mountain right at the edge of town. It was a beautiful sunny day and so I was hoping to find some good lighting in the snow for the camera to capture. Together with Melly, I had come to a cute little walking path that led to the forest. This is photo number one, without counting the test photo. Just as I saw that skier walking by, I decided to take this shot and I like it. It's blurry for some reason, but actually the photo looks quite nice. That's where I've gone. It's just a symptom of a heart filled with down. Oh. So when I start looking in Next up. Well, I don't know. 
here I spotted a sign post that I thought could be a cool subject and just then someone entered the frame at the back which I thought could be a nice addition so I got the shot. I really like the overall look, I think this camera has a fixed setting that with an ISO 400 film works for most situations as long as the sun is shining, whereas on overcast days I assume it would work better with an ISO 800 film and for anything indoor you have a flash to help you out in case of a lack of light. Sadly though, the image is blurry again, as if the lens were very, and I mean very, soft, but it's not quite like that, which you'll see in some other photos later. I was really enjoying the look of the low winter light breaking through the trees and shining into the forest, so I was eagerly shooting a couple variations. The sun kissed your face. You turned the other cheek into the cloud filled the sky. This shot has some really nice colours and lighting going on, I love this view down to the houses. Another interesting thing we can see here though is that the lens is not entirely soft, instead the focus just seems to be off or something. I thought this camera is intended to be an always in focus camera with the closed aperture, however looking at this shot here you can see that the foreground actually appears properly sharp. In this photo of the sign you can see the focus again. The camera appears to have a fixed focus but on the midground. Anything that is 1 to 4 meters away it seems. The writing on the sign is perfectly sharp and you can see how the image gradually becomes blurry at the top the further away the object is. So I don't really know why that is, as far as I could figure out there is no way to change the focus. Which leads me to think that this is strange, because why would the camera be limited to solely shooting subjects that are 1 to 4 meters away? I don't know, and obviously my past self also didn't know, so I kept shooting wide shots of things far away as well, which sadly all turned out mildly blurry. But to be fair, this is a toy camera, so I wasn't exactly expecting magnificent results here. This photo however would have been pretty cool I think, but as you can see at the bottom, the fence in the foreground is the only thing in focus here. Won't you tell me It was at this moment that he knew. He no, 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 not so fast. I'm just joking, actually. But if you do ever lose your data, or even format your own SD card by mistake, then today's sponsor could help you out. Wondershare's Recoverit is a software that can recover your lost data. It has an easy interface that shows you all the features you can use, and you simply need to select the driver that you want to scan and let Recoverit dive deep into the depths of that data to find your lost files. They've improved their raw file scanning capabilities, which is great for us photographers, and they keep adding file types that they can detect and repair, now also including MXF files. Luckily, I've never needed to recover lost data, so I tried it out with an old USB stick of mine and I was blown away by all the things Recover It found. It is crazy, it found files from years ago and even ones I don't remember ever having. Recover It is really easy and honestly quite fun, and you can try it out for free with their free trial, so if you want to check it out yourself, go to the link in the description. Big shout out to them for sponsoring another video of mine, thank you very much.
was again in awe of the impressive views that Inspok just keeps hitting me with. Even now, as half a year has passed since moving here, I'm still impressed by Inspok's views all the time. Hence, I shot this photo, but of course, sadly the subject is way too far away for this camera. For a change, here's a photo that is in focus. However, now you already see some underexposure in the darker parts of this image when not shooting in the sun, so this camera is certainly only intended for very specific situations. Anyway, it was a lovely winter walk and I still had a couple shots left in the camera, but decided to not shoot anything unnecessary here and instead save the rest for another day. Said other day came a couple weeks later when I found the time for another walk and a little hike on a cloudy yet decently bright day. I began the session with a photo of the red car in this garden, which is a scene I simply found quite interesting and so I shot the photo. As expected, it turned out blurry, but apart from that, I think it's actually pretty decent. If only I could finish something, run straight through to the end. Now we can begin to see the limits of the fixed setting. For a scene like this that is a bit dark, I would have been better off with a higher ISO when shooting with this camera. But at least we have a photo to work with, and it's just a bit muddy looking, but we still got a photo nevertheless. to shoot a photo of this beautiful yellow car with the yellow fish at the front window. I knew this one was going to be at high risk of underexposure and it sure came out underexposed but mostly still visible. I really liked the look of this house here and how it was built on the mountain with the forest rising above behind. The shot again is a bit underexposed but not too horribly. ended the hike here because I didn't see the point in entering the forest where there was no chance at shooting a decent picture due to a lack of light. And so I turned around and made my way back home. On that way however, after I had already turned the camera off, I actually came across a neat scene that I decided to shoot. I really like it. The path leading to the mountain with the fence accompanying it makes a pleasing composition. Also, I really enjoy having the house as the main subject. It just looks really cool on this field with the forest around it. This shot too turned out underexposed, but I still really like what I got. 
Then, I only had a few more shots left and so I decided to shoot them at home and use the flash so that I can see how well that works. So this camera doesn't have a self timer, but it has a nice flash that I want to make use of for self portrait. But seeing as I don't have a self timer, I'm going to have to extend my arm. <laughs> we'll see if this works. <laughs> I think it worked. Here's the result. And I think this turned out really nice. The flash is quite powerful and really lit up the photo nicely. And as you can see, when taking a portrait and having the subject rather close to the camera, the photo is in focus. So at least I have a few photos that are sharp. <laughs> I think this one also turned out pretty good. I like how you can still see a bit of the sunset outside. Anyway, that was one roll of film shot through this lovely quirky camera. I have come to the following conclusion. This is a wonderful camera to give to your child and not worry too much about. When using ISO 400, it is best suited for sunny days or anything that makes sense with a flash. Also, I don't know if this is exclusively my camera, or if they are all like this. Preferably, you'll want to shoot subjects that are only 1-4 to four meters away from the camera if you want your shots to be in focus. And that concludes this, well, not review, but sort of. I hope you had fun watching and following along. Would you know a good use case for this camera? Personally, I think it could be a great camera for parties because that will mostly erase the focusing problem, seeing as I'd mostly shoot photos of my friends not too far away from the camera. Anyway, before saying goodbye, I would like to thank the lovely people supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much to each one of you. If you're interested in Lightroom presets, tutorials, or postcards, you can check out my page via the link in the description. Also, I have a print shop, by the way, in case that is of interest to you, also in the description. With that said, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.